Hundreds of juvenile corals bred at the Australian Institute of Marine Science have survived being transplanted on the Great Barrier Reef. This is the first test to assess the feasibility of the technique called assisted gene flow. Dr Lena Bay leads the Australian Institute of Marine Science's research into reef recovery and she joins us now from Townsville. Doctor, thanks for your time this afternoon. How did Good you afternoon. breed these baby coral? Well, what we're doing in this study is uh, testing whether corals that have parents from the northern part of the Great Barrier Reef that have survived these recent bleaching events that have so devastated the reefs in that area, whether they can pass on heat tolerance to their offspring, to, to the young that they produce, and whether that uh, uh, advantage can be maintained on cooler reefs. And we hope that this knowledge can help us speed up adaptation to the warmer temperatures that we're seeing on our coral reefs um, happening at the moment. So you're not breeding them to be identical to existing coral. So what are the differences between these new little corals and the existing corals in the Great Barrier Reef? Yeah, so what we've done is we have bred uh, corals that have two parents from the far northern uh, reefs, one parent or two parents from cooler reefs. And now we're growing them on a cooler reef to see whether they indeed pass their temperature tolerance off to their offspring like we predict based on our results uh, from the laboratory over the past few years. How long until you expect to see some results? Well, this experiment base is based on many years of research at the Australian Institute of Marine Science. We're hoping to get the first answers from the work that we're doing at the moment within a couple of months. We're currently analysing how many corals have uh, survived and we're looking at whether they have this uh, maintained temperature tolerance that we're hoping to see. How much work went into this program and how costly was it? So the work that we're doing, this particular experiment, is funded by the Australian Institute of Marine Science and it's been helped along by community organisations as well. We flew the corals back from the far northern Great Barrier Reef and then housed them in a national sea simulator, the very advanced research aquarium that we're lucky to have at the Australian Institute of Marine Science. And then we took these uh, very young and very small corals uh, to the reef where they've been growing since March this year. So is this a more sustainable model for the future? Is this something that we could be seeing more of? So what we're looking at uh, at the moment is one of about 40 uh, odd interventions that are currently very new on the Great Barrier Reef but are being examined, uh, proposed to be able to help uh, our reef uh, uh, resist and recover and adapt to the warming temperatures that we're experiencing as a result of CO2 emissions. Yeah, just tell us a bit more about some of those other interventions and especially the ones that aim at helping the existing coral and ecosystem there. Yeah, so the interventions that we're looking at, the 40-odd interventions, spread over three uh, general areas. They can be grouped to be the ones that help to protect the reef from the stresses that might be occurring. So these could be things like cooling or shading methods uh, to help uh, prevent corals experiencing these marine heat waves that can cause bleaching and mortality. They also address uh, areas to help restore reefs if uh, damage has occurred and they might include things like help capture natural spawning slicks and direct them onto the reef where they are really needed rather than the natural dispersal that we might see. And then lastly, the techniques that are associated with helping corals adapt and evolve uh, tolerance towards the temperatures, uh, the increasing temperatures we're seeing. They inclu include approaches such as the one that I've described to you, where we're using natural breeding uh, methods to, uh, and then translocation to help the movement of these already naturally tolerant corals out there on the reef. So have you seen any promising results so far? Well, the early results are very promising. Uh, we are finding hundreds of these young corals surviving uh, the first six months on the reef and we're very excited to then uh, start to analyse whether the corals that have two parents or just a single parent from the warmer reefs indeed have this advantage that we predict they might have. If the world doesn't act to address climate change, will this be enough to save the Great Barrier Reef? 
Well, it's a very po uh, important point. Uh, there's a very important point to make here, and that is that our analyses are, are very clearly showing that no uh, single intervention is a silver bullet. So uh, we, w we will have a much greater chance of success if we combine interventions. We must also continue the, content the conventional management that is currently in place on the Great Barrier Reef, such as water quality management and crown of, thorn, crown of thorns control. And then lastly, it must be very, very clear that we must act both nationally and internationally to uh, curb CO2 emissions and to keep climate change to the very uh, minimum. Without action on climate change, coral reefs face a very, very difficult future and we really must do the very best that we can to, to act and to keep temperatures within manageable levels. All right, Dr. Lena Bay, we really appreciate your time this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.